Here's my candidate. The legendary Segway. A bit like Girls Aloud. It's not for everybody, but once you've had a go, do you know what I mean? The Segway's American inventor, Dean Kamen, decided to create this zippy alternative to the car because he wanted our cities to be faster, cooler and cleaner. But before the Segway was launched, nobody had a clue what he was planning. There were rumours it was going to be bigger than the internet and even that it was going to be able to fly. When the Segway was revealed on an American TV show in December 2001, people realised they'd been led to expect a bit much. Obviously, it couldn't fly, but it was still a stunning bit of kit. Segways have five gyroscopic sensors and a couple of accelerometers, so they can glide along at 12 miles per hour. That's three times faster than walking. They measure your lean angle 100 times a second and tell the electric motor exactly how much power to apply to keep you upright. It's incredibly clever, but once you get used to it, remarkably intuitive. Think about how complicated walking is. Right foot up, right foot forward, right foot down, grip. Repeat with the left leg. Way too difficult. Now, a lot of people think the Segway is possibly a little over-engineered as an alternative to walking, but it has caught on with certain groups. Which is why the Chicago police force use them and also why the Swedish bomb squad has recently ordered a batch. Oh, and posh golfers use them too to get about the course. But that's not really that cool, so forget that, John. Logically, we should all be gliding around on segways, but unfortunately in Britain and many other places around the world, they're not road legal. This, plus a price tag of over £4,000, has meant they've never really caught on. But because the Segway is clearly the coolest and most innovative way of travelling since the car, it fully deserves a place on the wall of fame. As far as alternatives to walking go, in my opinion, the Segway has a problem. You've got to stand on it to make it work. That's not the case with this, the Sinclair C5. It looks even more futuristic than the Segway, but was invented way back in 1985 by the legendary British inventor Clive Sinclair. After several false starts, the C5 was finally born in 1985 when Clive struck a deal with Lotus to tweak its design and build a prototype. He also enlisted the help of another famous British company, Hoover, to make the plastic moulded body. Because Segways don't have pedals, they're not classed as bikes and they're obviously not cars, so they're illegal to use on British roads. The C5 has got pedals as well as an electric motor, which means you can drive them on any road. So, I legally get to tell you exactly what it's like. It's bigger than the Segway, but it's about the same weight, 50 kilograms. And that's on account of its lightweight Hoover bodywork. It'll travel between 12 and 15 miles an hour and go 20 miles on one charge, which is pretty impressive. And I reckon it's a steadier ride than that wobbly Segway. It's got a 250-watt motor made by an Italian company called Polymotor. And yes, the rumours that they make washing machine engines are true, but they also make torpedoes. People with no sense of adventure said the C5 was dangerous because it was so low down in the road, and they moaned about its lack of gears and uncomfortable seating position. It's their fault that only 17,000 were ever sold and that production lasted only eight months before the company went into receivership. But while Otis's daft handlebar and wheels cost over £4,000, this fully roadworthy C5 costs just £400. That's why it deserves a place on the wall of fame. It's cheap, it's fun, it's eco-friendly. And it was invented by a British man called Clive. Right, gentlemen, that looked like a huge amount of fun. Great. However, I've got a couple of questions for you both, starting with you, Jason. C5, 25 years on, started with this huge ambition years ago to be a serious personal transport device, has ended up really just as a bit of fun, a bit of a joke, even. What? Hey? <laughs> That's almost unpatriotic, what you just said. No, I, w I wouldn't say that, um, you know, you should push this as a practical means of going to and from work. Certainly not. John, it is a bit of fun. It's like a dancing toy robot, you know. <laughs> um, you marvel at the engineering and the design, but really, ultimately, it's a bit of fun, and that's why I'm so passionate about the C5. And Otis, the Segway, was supposed to be so big it was going to rival the internet, and yet you hardly see one in Britain anyway. OK, so it's not as successful as they wanted it to be, but over 1,000 law enforcement agencies globally use these, and you'd see them more in the UK if the government would make them road legal.
Ooh, this is a, it's a tricky decision. You've got, the, you've got the lovely British charm of the C5 versus the not quite as popular as it was supposed to be, but still fun <laughs> Segway. Ooh, um, and I think the winner really is quite obvious, <laughs> the Segway. What? Because what? The, the concepts in there are so much more what? sophisticated, it's so much more inventive, it is actually useful. And for those two reasons, the Segway deserves its place on the gadget shows Wall of Fame. <laughs>